Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's Monday, it's nine o'clock, which means it's time for a five by five. Now this is where I take five different subjects, uh, all related to magic. I spend five minutes talking about each subject. There is a countdown timer at the bottom. The countdown timer counts down to zero when I reach zero and move on to the next subject. It's always quick, always snappy, and you never know what you're gonna get. One thing that people have been saying over and over again is they wanna see more live performance footage and they're really digging the idea of having a voiceover track over that live performance performance footage as well. So I'm going to do another live video for you. The first two sequences or the first two segments uh, on this 5x5 five five are going to be examining a live performance at a gig. Now the first uh, uh, the first video is of me performing cards across. Now I do hundreds of different cards across routines, maybe not hundreds, that might be an exaggeration, but I do do an awful lot and the thing with cards across is you vary it up depending on the environment that you're in. So I put a a routine called Across on Visible, which is great for mix and mingle to small groups. It's great for a parlor show setting. Not so good for when you're surrounded by people. Uh, when you, uh, and, and then I have a completely different version that I use on stage and a completely different, you know, so many different versions. So the version you're about to see now is the classic version of Cards Across. Uh, I think, um, I think, oh my God, I've been doing this for years. I think uh, the first person I saw do this style of presentation was Bill Malone, maybe. Um, this is great for an in the trenches style Cards Across. Uh, and you'll see that I'm completely surrounded. Um, and I'm using the palm to actually get the card to go across so because I'm using a palm to get the cards to go across and because I'm holding those cards out for quite a while I have to be aware of audience management I have to be aware of uh, directing people's attention and, and you'll see this in the video so the first video is going to be me doing the cards across routine at a gig and then the second video is going to be the exact same footage but I'm going to do a commentary track over the top uh, because I, I know a lot of magicians suffer from magicians guilt uh, holding out cards for a long time and that's something I've never worried about probably because I'm a coin guy so I'm used to holding things out for a long time anyway uh, but there's things that you can learn from watching the video so first segment is going to be a live performance then the second section we're going to be dropping a, uh, a commentary track over the top talking about angles and holding out and audience management let's get to it can you uh, give your drink to someone you trust and also uh, Lottie is going to be helping with this trick as well okay uh, Jane can you take the cards and what I would like you to do is count 10 cards into my hand, one at a time, out loud. Now, as you count the cards, everybody here is going to be counting along with you for two reasons. The first reason is I want to make sure there's exactly 10 cards there. And number two, I'm in Telford, so you guys might struggle. So... <laughs> Sorry. No, I heard you the first time, love. I'm just sorry. <laughs> right, <okay. laughs> you can't help it. I don't blame you. Two, <clears throat> three. three. You're dealing off the bottom as I well. Did you, uh, you didn't say where. Oh, have you ever helped a magician before? Because no. you're not helping one now. Three, <laughs> four, four, five, five six, six. Oh, now in the middle. Seven. Seven. Eight, eight, nine, nine ten. ten. You did very well. I struggled with the high numbers. That was very good. Um, pass the cards across to Lottie. Lottie's going to have to give a drink to someone. And can you do me a favour? Hold that in your hand. Pick yeah. that, like that. So I can't get to them at all. Very good. Keep your hand on top. And can, Lottie, the same thing. Can you count ten cards as well? One. Oh, now we don't. <laughs> <laughs> One. Three. 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 Six, seven, eight, you can indeed. Nine, Give me a kiss, ten. ten, lovely. And pass the card across to, uh, the cards across to uh, the man with all the drinks. Josh. There we go, lovely. <laughs> and, and hold the cards. You're going to have to give those drinks to somebody who'll put them oh, down. Thanks. Lovely. There you go. Uh, somebody, there we go. That's perfect. And do me a favour, hold those cards in between your hands as well. That would be great. And, and pass me the deck. What's your name, sir? Josh. Correct, well done. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <good job. laughs> Um, you're going to pick a card, Josh. Now, whatever card you pick, I'm going to make that many cards jump from Jane's hand to Lottie's hand. So if you pick a seven, I'll make seven cards jump across. Uh, a ten, ten cards will jump across. No. Three. Does that mean three, 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 three. Uh, Keep them so I can't get to uh, Jack, Queen, or a King will count as ten. Ace will count as one. And a joker will be your choice. Okay? So just say stop. Stop. There. Let's have a look. We have a three. So I'm going to make three cards jump from your hand. To your hand. I love how you're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> you, 
You will you will feel them go, and lots of you will must definitely feel them arrive. Okay, here we go. Brace yourself on coming in. Card number one. <laughs> I just finished it. Story of my life. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's nice that you sound like my wife. <laughs> Let's try this again. Um, second card, watch. By the way, I do all my own choreography. <laughs> Did you feel anything like this? No, that's not looking at you. Okay, Tom, rub it in. <laughs> one last one, one last one, one last one, here we go. In fact, do me a favour. Uh, Adam, take that card. Cheers. And on three, I'm going to throw it right there at Lotz's hand. One, two, three. Adam, tell me the truth, be honest, don't lie. If I told you you made that last card go across yourself, would you believe me? No. Then what the hell were you doing? <laughs> So what, uh, how many cards did you have? Ten. Ten. And 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 you picked three. Uh, you picked three, yeah. Josh. So what's three from ten? Seven. Cameron. How about one, two, two three, three, four, four five, five, six. Oh, six. Oh, I don't know you very well, Lottie, but I'm just not sure. <laughs> 10 plus 3 is 13, right? Yeah. If there's 13 cards there, every single man, woman, and child here is going to go crazy and give a big round of applause to you and me, but mainly me. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, two, three, three four, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten eleven, twelve. <laughs> Okay, so there's a few things going on here, and the first thing I want you to notice, and I think probably the most important thing that I want you to get from watching this performance, is the importance of bantering with the audience. Cards across can be a very boring trick, because there's a lot of dealing, if you think about it. Two spectators are dealing ten cards, and then later on, they're dealing cards out again. So you have to make it interesting, you have to make it amusing, you have to make it entertaining. So you'll see that uh, I, I, a lot of the time when I'm performing, what I'll do is I'll listen to what people are saying and I'll try and react to that, especially if it's slowing the trick down. So the perfect example is this person here who decided to deal from the bottom in the middle of the deck. Now I knew that that would take a lot longer to deal through than if she was just dealing off the top. So I draw the attention to it, I make it funny. And you can see the smiles on people's faces, you can see that even though this is a kind of a slow dealing procedure, it's not an issue. Now notice that the palm takes place right when I'm directing people's attention elsewhere. I'm asking her to pass the cards across and that's when the palm takes place. A lot of magicians are scared of palming. The biggest piece of advice I can give you is do it when people aren't looking. Now you notice I'm focusing seeing everybody's attention on her dealing the cards, and that's because I'm holding out three cards. Notice my hand is dropped to my side, even though I'm completely surrounded. You can't actually see it, but my hand is pushed against the leg of my trousers or jeans, which means that there's absolutely no way they're gonna see anything. And I ask her to put her drinks down, which gives me the perfect misdirection to load the three cards onto her packet. And now we're done. Technically, the trick is over now. All I need to do at this point is force the three on this guy. But notice that one other thing I do is I very clearly set up the premise. I want people to know exactly what's going to be happening at this point. I'm going to make cards jump from one hand to the other, and you are going to be deciding how many cards. And I see a lot of people that do cards across and they don't include this sequence. They don't include that moment. And I think that they, you really should because this adds an extra layer of impossibility, if that makes sense. So now we're going into the cards across sequence and this is just all presentation. The nice thing is the trick is already done. And I think it's important for everybody watching this to realize the difference between the actual moment of magic and the perceived moment of magic. The perceived moment of magic, or in other words, when the audience perceive that the trick is taking place, is right now. The actual moment of magic, from my point of view, happened ages ago, when I was messing around with the audience and palming the cards and so on and so forth. It's important to actually make that distinguish. 
uh, that moment. Now, notice that, again, this sequence could be quite boring, but I'm drawing every little bit out of it that I can. And that's very, very important. It's really important to draw every little piece of magic out of any particular moment. And, and, and presentationally, you want to make it funny when the cards are jumping across. You want to make it interesting. You want to make it amusing. That whole thing of I do my own choreography. And, you know, it, 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 it's, it's entertainment at the end of the day. We're using magic as a vehicle to entertain people. Uh, but we can't just rely on the magic. We have to go with other, other things as well. But now I draw attention back over to this person. And I want everybody to be absolutely crystal clear and focused on her when they see there's just seven cards. Now, they, you saw the reaction there, it was a really strong reaction. But now I'm, I'm, I'm explaining, hey, if there's 13 cards there, this would be absolutely incredible. Everyone's gonna go crazy, this is gonna be an amazing moment. So now everybody's attention is focused right there, which is exactly where I want them to focus. You get that 13 cards, you can see how everybody reacts. For a very, very simple card trick, it plays to a huge audience you can do it completely surrounded. It is an absolute classic. You just need to be aware of the audience's um, management. You have to be aware of audience management and you have to make it interesting because there's a lot of procedure in this trick. But as long as you make it interesting, you won't have a problem. Right, okay, so a little while ago, I actually reviewed uh, Switch One by Christian Grace on uh, the Craig and Ryland Review Show. You can go back and check that out if you want to. Uh, we both, myself and Ryland, gave it a really good review. Uh, this is kind of an update to that review because I've now had a chance to work it in a few gigs. And uh, I've, I've just got some feedback that you guys might be interested in, possibly. So the first thing that I want to say is this is as powerful in the real world as it uh, as I thought it would be. Uh, it's just, it works really well. And I'm going to be doing some live performances of this and uh, I'm going to get some video footage of me doing this. And when I do, I'll drop it on the channel, either on this or another video um, or on one of the five by fives in the future. Um, how I'm framing this right now is I'm doing this a lot at uh, sort of big tables. So when I'm at wedding breakfasts and sort of corporate dinners and private parties where they've got banquet tables. I've been using this an awful lot and I'm using it to frame a performance. And what I mean by that is the first thing that I do uh, when I walk over to the table and there's normally lots of glasses around is I say, hey, uh, that glass over there, is anyone using that? No, can I borrow that? That'd be amazing. And I take the glass, I invert it and I just take a folded up card out of my pocket. Uh, I put it down on the table, I cover it up with the glass and I say, sorry to be en enigmatic. I'll get back to that a little bit later on. I then do my act, whatever my act's going to be, you know, nor, uh, whatever it may be. It might be a coin trick, it might be a card trick, it might be a Rubik's Cube trick. I'm going to do whatever it is that I'm going to do. And then that is going to be my callback piece at the very end. So after I've finished whatever it is I'm doing, uh, I, I, I finish off with this and I say, look, guys, we're going to try one more thing. And I don't draw attention to the card under the uh, glass. My hope is at this point they've completely forgotten about the card under the glass, right? Uh, and uh, I, I say, hey, we're going to try and do one more thing. I want you to imagine an invisible deck of cards. I want you to either remove the red cards or the black cards. And I go through the whole presentation. And my reasoning, by the way, to access the index, I'm not doing the thing with the mobile phone. My reasoning to access the index is to take the invisible card box and put it away in my pocket. Uh, because when I'm getting them to pantomime, uh, doing this whole imagination deck routine. I'm doing it with an invisible deck. Now, I'm not doing the, the invisible deck presentation. I'm not doing the gags that you'd normally associate with an invisible deck, but I am giving them an invisible deck and telling them to remove cards, which allows me to, um, you know, put that invisible deck back away at the end to steal the relevant card. Uh, and then, after I've got them to name that card, I, I say, do you remember the first thing that I did when I walked over to the table is I took a folded up card and I put it down underneath that glass that's been there the entire time. And then people are like, no. And you go, hang on a second, let me just take the glass. This has been here the whole time. You're not going to believe this. Unfold it, do the switch, give them the card, kill a moment, absolutely kill a moment. I've, I've tried it a few different ways. That for me is the best way for performing it because it gets such a killer reaction. The other thing that I want you guys to consider 
is if you are working a hot room and there's a lot of people and there's no air con or you're sweaty or whatever it may be, um, you want to be aware of that when you're using the gimmick. So the first time I went out and used this, I had it in my jacket pocket and I was there to do two hours of table magic. And the first half was great. And now about an hour into the gig, I went into my, uh, I, I was doing the routine and I did the switch. And as I opened the card and did the switch, I noticed that the five, that, that the pick the five of diamonds, it was kind of grubby compared to the card that I put down on the table. And as I walked away, I kind of just took a step back for a second and I went into a different room and I looked at my gimmick and the, the, the half of the gimmick that had been pushing against my uh, sort of my body, so to speak, uh, it, it, some of the cards were wrecked because the, 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 you know, they'd been sweaty and, and the cards were absolutely wrecked, which is not a good situation to be in. So that's something you need to bear in mind. Um, there's been a couple of situations where I've been at gigs where you can just feel the heat when you walk in. I don't think we're going to have a problem in the summer. I don't think, uh, sorry, in the winter. I don't think we're going to have a problem with this outside or in a lot of situations. But I have found that a bit of an issue. And I don't really have an, a solution for a way around it uh, other than maybe don't sweat. But I mean, have you guys had this same problem? And if you do, how have you got around it? I'd love to know because... Uh, my gimmicks look kind of worse for wear, if that kind of makes sense. So uh, that's my feedback on Switch One. I still love it. Let me know your thoughts. Okay, guys. So let me uh, talk to you about somebody who's going to be appearing on a Talk Magic interview soon, right here on Magic TV. And that is Paul Green. Now, I've spoken about Paul on this channel before. Uh, his DVD, In the Trenches, which is still available, uh, was a huge impact on my career. Paul is incredible. He was a columnist for um, uh, Magic Menu for many, many years. He's uh, a regular performer at the Magic Castle. Paul Green is brilliant and I'm so super excited that he agreed to come on the channel and do an interview. This interview is going to be great. He drops so many knowledge bombs. Uh, I wanted to give you a sneak peek of the Paul Green interview. So here is a sneak peek, but the full interview is going to be coming soon to Magic TV. Well, you know, you need to, you need to know about theatre. And that's something, you know, whether you read about it or, or have a director or, or, you know, have someone critique what you're doing and, and figure out the theatricality of what it is. And that is everything from the smallest, from the smallest close up miracle to the big stage. Yeah. You know, learn how to move, learn how to use your mic, learn how to uh, learn how to cross from one side of the stage to the next. Yeah, absolutely. So. Absolutely. One hundred percent. Let me change subject slightly. I mean, obviously, you mentioned earlier on when we talked about your career that you've performed in almost every single arena that there is to perform in. Um, and. One of the things that I get asked about a lot on this channel, and again, I get so many questions on particular things, but one question that comes up over and over and over again is restaurant magic. How do I get into restaurants? How do I do restaurant magic? How can I get myself a regular gig? Now, as somebody who has been a regular contributor for the Magic Menu, and if you don't know, if you're listening to this and you don't know what the Magic Menu is, it's one of my favorite periodicals. It was a, uh, a, a it ran for five years. It was a... Um, monthly magazine specifically to magic in a bar or restaurant environment. And so the, the, over the years, there was some incredible magic uh, shared, routine shared, but also some wonderful advice uh, with some incredible columnists. And, and you were a regular columnist for the magic menu. So obviously, you know, when you, 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 you I consider you be, a, 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 an expert when it comes to restaurant magic and bar magic and that side of things. Do you have any advice when it comes to restaurant and bar magic about, about performing in that environment or how to, to, to get the gig or whatever? Any, any advice? Because this is a question that comes up over and over again. Well, sure. First question is, do you want to be a restaurant magician or do you want to be a magician that has a venue to pass your business card out? Mm. And I think that that's very important. I worked for over 25 years at a restaurant in Beverly Hills. And my purpose was to pass my business card out. 
I got paid for working there, but my purpose in working was to, in essence, audition for every party that I ever worked for. Mm. Uh, so that at the end I could give them my business card. And it's, it's interesting, uh, believe it or not, I had a show before the COVID pandemic hit, somebody had held onto my business card for about 25 years. Wow. And I got hired for a gig. So that was my purpose. Um, there are many, many performers that are utilizing restaurants as their job. And it's four or five days a week. Um, I never, ever wanted a job like that. I certainly love doing magic, but I didn't want to get what I was getting at the restaurant. I wanted to get paid much larger fees, which I was able to do. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, find, find a restaurant that you enjoy going to. You have to enjoy the food. And then look at the clients that are there. Are they the kind of person or persons that, from, in my work, are they the kind of people that threw parties? Yeah. Are they the kind of people that had corporate events? Uh, were they in town at a trade show? Uh, did they just come from a hospitality suite? Um, that was my market. That's what I looked for. Now, if you're a family performer and you do birthday party shows, uh, you can go to a family restaurant in the in the United States. We're talking about Red Robin. We're talking about uh, Chili's. Okay, so everybody who knows me knows me well enough that uh, you realize I'm a big fan of Jay Sankey. I'm a big fan of Jay Sankey's material. He's brought some clunkers out over the years, but generally, as a rule, Jay hits and hits hard. Um, and I've talked about this on the channel once or twice before in passing, uh, but I really want to use this to highlight to you one of my favorite Jay Sankey tricks that I don't see anybody doing. And it's a great trick that you can do anytime, anywhere. And uh, the only thing that you need is a dupe in your deck. Now, I always make sure I've either got a dupe or a uh, two identical jokers in my deck. In fact, a lot of the time these days, uh, if I'm using bikes, I'm using Elite Edition. And the nice thing about the Elite Edition is that uh, the two jokers are the same, which gives you a pseudo duplicate which is absolutely perfect. Now, this has been published in a few different uh, Jay Sankey projects, uh, including uh, his books from Vanishing Inc. You can get it from many different places, but it's a crying shame that more people don't do this because this is such a commercial trick. Uh, it's easy to do. It's a regular deck of cards. Uh, you don't require a table. It's an instant reset. The magic happens in the spectator's hands. It's super visual. What's not to love? Let me show it to you. I'm going to have... Uh, Sarah behind the camera helped me with this. So Sarah, are you okay with this? Yeah. So I've got a deck of cards, 52 cards. And what I need you to do, please, if you can, is to just say stop anytime you want to. Stop. Wonderful stuff. So uh, it doesn't really matter where you stopped at. I'm allowed to uh, to look the four of diamonds. Are you happy with that one? Are you happy yeah, with the four? Fine. Cool. I'm going to uh, put the four right here. Normally, if I was performing this, I would I would put that into the spectator's hand. Um, but we're going to need one more card as well. So we'll leave the four of diamonds here. Sarah, say stop. Stop. That's great. And again, uh, or you make all the choices here. So we've got the, uh, the Joker. Are you happy with the Joker? Yeah. Now, I'm going to mark this Joker in a very interesting and unique way. I want to watch what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this joker and I'm just going to tear the end of it like this. And if I, uh, if I do a tear, hopefully you can see that's not an optical illusion. I really have torn that joker. Now, uh, in magic, there's something called a transposition, which is all about making two objects change places. Now, I'm going to go one step further. Rather than making two objects change places, I'm going to make the condition of a playing card jump from one place to another, which sounds insane, but you'll see exactly what I mean in a second. So we have this Joker, which is torn, and we have this four that's been here the whole time. So what I want you to do is watch the tear. I'm gonna pull the tear three times, and on the third pull, something amazing will happen. So here we go, watch. Once, twice, three times, and I can pull the tear off the Joker. 
And even though it's come off the Joker, it actually goes right there on the Four of Diamonds. There it is. And you can have that as a souvenir. And you hand it out. The nice thing about this trick is, honestly, uh, I don't know what you guys thought from watching that. Maybe, you know, uh, as a magician, you thought, oh, that's an interesting use of that principle or whatever. But to a layman, this kills because they they know that you can manipulate coins. They know you can manipulate cards. They've heard of sleight of hand. But a tear is a very permanent uh, thing. It's like, it's like you can't do anything with a tear. And yet you move that tear from one place to another. And that moment where you pull it, it is so super visual. Now, like I say, uh, this is just a regular deck. So as long as you've got a pseudo dupe or an actual dupe in there, you're good to go. The one negative, or not really a negative, but it's something you need to be aware of, is you're wrecking a card from that deck every single time you do one of these tricks. Um, so, you know, if you're using, if you need a full deck for a particular routine and you do this, you're not going to be able to use that for a full deck. But other than that, I mean, that's the only thing that you need to be aware of. It's a great piece to do in amongst a couple of real heavy hitters. So if you're doing a card set and you want to throw something in that's a little bit lighter, but still packs a punch, this is something that you can absolutely include. So it's by Jay Sankey. You can get it, uh, you know, the best thing is, I, it, the problem with Jay is he brings out so much material and sometimes he'll bring tricks out more than once or he'll publish them in a different thing and he'll call it a completely different name. So it's almost impossible to keep track of this stuff. But uh, if you like it, you can get it from Jay, email him, he'll tell you which project it's on. It's definitely in his books from Vanishing Ink, uh, but it's a regular deck of cards, anytime, anywhere. It's very easy to do and it's well worth picking up. So there you go, that's a bit of a spotlight. So there you go, guys. That is another 5x5 five five in the bag. Thank you very much for watching the uh, video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Uh, and, and let me see what sort of thing you want to see on a 5x5. Five five. We're doing a lot of live performance footage at the moment because that's what you guys have asked for, so that's what we're delivering. But if there's something else that you'd like to see on a future 5x5, five five, let me know, and I promise you I'll make it happen. As normal, if you want to see more videos like this, do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. That would be amazing. I'm going to be back again on Tuesday with the Talk Magic at 9 o'clock, the Shorts at 2 o'clock, and a Live at 6 o'clock. So thanks once again for watching. My name's Craig from Magic. Mm -hmm.